Hey everyone, it's Allie and welcome to my channel. And today I'm really excited to talk to you about the book of the year finalists for book of the month. All right, you guys, so if you've been watching my channel, you know I am right in the middle of a move. It is totally chaotic here. It is currently Friday, three days before we move. But you know what? That's fine. Let's just talk about some books. So recently, Book of the Month, which I'm a huge advocate of, not sponsored, I just really do enjoy their service and I do feel like it is a pretty good deal. They recently came out with their 2023 Book of the Year finalists as well as the winner of their book of the year. And I thought that this could be a cool video. I had already read two of the books. There were five finalists total. I will say now, I did only read two other ones. I did consciously not read one, and we will talk about that. But I thought it would be kind of fun for me to give you my opinions and let you know what my personal ranking of the books are and which one I thought should have won book of the year. Because spoiler, it is not the one that did actually win. So I have three of the books here with me now. I do own the fourth one, but I'm moving and yeah, it is somewhere. I don't know where it is. It's in a box. So first up we have The Wishing Game. This is one that I did choose myself. We'll talk about all these more in a second, but I did absolutely love this one. Then we've got Shark Heart, A Love Story, which I just read, as well as Yours Truly, which I also just finished. And then the other two books are Lisa Jewell's None of This Is True, which was a thriller. That one, like The Wishing Game, I did pick up on my own accord, not because of this video. And then the last one, the one that I did not read on purpose, <laughs> is Wayward by Amelia Hart. All right, so first let's talk about the book that actually won book of the year, and that is Yours Truly. And I will absolutely first start off by saying I am not really a rom-com person. I will read them every once in a while, but I am really not someone who seeks them out. I cannot really read them back to back. I like a little bit of unpredictability in my books. I like romance if there's other stuff going on, like if there's romance in a fantasy, I do not mind a romantasy, or if there's like romance in historical fiction or even thrillers, literary fiction. But this kind of just standard, like it's all about a romance in this day and age where there's really nothing else going on. It's just not my personal favorite. Obviously, because this one book of the year and just looking around booktube, bookstagram in general, looking at the Barnes & Noble what's popular sections. I am in the minority opinion and that's totally fine. A lot of people really, really do love rom-coms. So with all that being said, this was actually my lowest ranked one of the four books that I read. I gave this about a 3.5. I could totally see why people who love this genre would give this five stars. If you're not familiar with the story, it's kind of a classic like slight enemies to lovers but for a very short period of the book and they're both doctors so it did kind of give like love hypothesis vibes i will say though i did prefer the love hypothesis to yours truly i just felt like there was a little bit more going on in that book and i think overall i did like the two main characters in that story better than this one. But this was pretty well written. It was engaging. Even though I knew exactly what was going to happen in this book, I was surprised to find that I was still interested. It had a lot of cute moments, some sentimental moments, and a lot of the typical rom-com tropes. So if you do like that, if you do like knowing what is going to happen, you just want a lighthearted, feel-good story, I do think this is a good one. I will say this is actually part of a series, kind of, or I would say just in the same world. I didn't realize that until I got this book when I was looking it up on Goodreads to say I started reading it. It said part of your world number two. So I was like, oh shoot, I hope I know what's going on and everything. I don't get confused. But yeah, you absolutely do not need to read the part of your world book first. It's just that one of the main character's best friend is the main character in the first book. So even though I would not have picked this as the book of the year, I do think it is a very good book for the genre, and if you do like rom-coms, I would recommend it. And also, I am someone who does not like spicy scenes, and there is a really good account on Instagram called The Real Life Book Reviewer, and she does read a lot of rom-coms. And I like her account because she will say what chapters or what pages or whatever are spicier, so you can skip that. And there really is only one shorter chapter that is pretty explicit. So just know that too, if you also don't like to read spice, 
This one isn't too bad. All right, now let's talk about None of This Is True by Lisa Jewell. I will just have the image of the book up here. Let me go back to my Goodreads because I did read this last year. I think I did read it right when it came out. So yeah, subtle plug. If you don't follow me on Goodreads, definitely follow me over there because I do keep that updated as I am reading books so you can know what I am reading before I talk about it on the internet. So I gave this book five stars. I said, wowie. I stayed up all night reading this one. really enjoyed it. Love a psychological thriller with an unreliable narrator. Cool concept, having the two main characters be birthday twins, two very different women who were born on the same day, cross paths, and chaos ensues. So yeah, as someone who reads a lot of thrillers, just like in the rom-com genre, some of them can start to blend together a little bit, but this is one that stuck out to me as I read it, and now, probably nearing almost a year later, maybe eight months later or so, I still remember it well. It definitely still sticks out in my mind as one that is absolutely worth reading. So like I said in that review, there are two women who meet and they are birthday twins. They are born on the same day and they are very different from each other and one kind of gets obsessed with the other one. And there is that unreliable narrator, which I really, really love in a psychological thriller. This was one that I just totally ate up. I read it as fast as I could. I don't think I read it in one sitting, but I probably read it in a day. So if you are not someone who reads a lot of thrillers and you're kind of overwhelmed by the options, or maybe you've read kind of some predictable thrillers or boring ones, I would really recommend this one. And this author, Lisa Jewell, is one that I am very excited to read a lot more from in the future. Next up was the other one that I picked out myself last year, and that is The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. And I'm pretty sure this is the author's debut book. Yeah, it looks like it is. And this is so, so cute. I would describe this as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for book lovers. So if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're a book lover. I really do think you would like this one. There's a contest. There's a grand mansion. There's a mysterious author. There's just so much good stuff going on in this story. And it almost reads like a middle grade, but the main character is an adult but it's a clean book. It's one that I think a lot of different people would enjoy. Again, a five-star read from me. I said the book was such a joy to read, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vibes, and a sweet story about relationships and family with fun puzzles throughout. Loved it. So yeah, super, super good. Just a good, heartwarming story. So now let's talk about the book that I did not read, and I almost read it, but I was like, I don't want to force myself to. And that is the book Wayward. And this book was on my radar for a while, and it was one that I thought I would end up reading. I was seeing it, you know, in Barnes & Noble and my half price books and places like that, and I just never picked it up. But honestly, I saw that there were some trigger warnings for miscarriage and abortion, and I have struggled with infertility myself, and I'm not trying to like be all dramatic or whatever. I've definitely read a lot of books that those themes are in. But when I was getting these books, I just was like, you know what, I'm really not in a place right now where I want to read about that, especially like in the midst of this move. I just didn't want to read something that heavy. So I'm annoyed a little bit with myself that I didn't read it because I wanted this to be a complete video but I will definitely give you guys some reviews from other people. And honestly, I feel like I will read this eventually because it looks like there's multiple perspectives and it is kind of a historical fiction magical realism, which I do love the idea of that. I just, like I said, I didn't want to read something that was really focusing a lot on fertility issues, baby issues, things like that. So it looks like it's set partly in 2019, also 1619, and also 1942. So of course, in a future video, if I do end up reading this, I will keep you updated, because I feel like this could end up being a five-star read for me. But overall, on Goodreads, the average rating is a 4.1. So one of my friends on Goodreads, Jordan, rated it 4.5. She said, this is such a beautiful book cover and beautifully written. And I don't know what her rating was originally, but she said, I'm changing my rating to a 4.5. I haven't stopped thinking about it since I read it. Julia, who has her own book account, she said, 
This book truly was like nothing I've read before. Very impressive for a debut author. Did not even realize it was debut. She said, the middle felt slow for me, but the beginning and end were captivating. And I love how all three storylines intertwined and came together. And I really do love that in historical fiction books. She said, this book is about the power that we as women hold inside us. I really enjoyed this one, four stars. But yeah, there's absolutely, like with any book, there's some two stars, one stars, but overall, yeah, the 4.10 is pretty solid rating. All right, now let's talk about the last book, the book that I personally think was the best, even though I had other ones rated five stars. I do think this one, in my opinion, is the most deserving of the book of the year. And that is Shark Heart, A Love Story by Emily Habeck. And I am really glad that I did this video because I would not have honestly picked this up because just seeing like a love story, I thought, oh, just another romance. I might struggle to get through it a little bit. But this was such a surprising read and there was romance in it, but the overall story was a lot more about coping with illness and loss of a loved one. But this was told in such a unique way because it kind of gave the feel of like, your loved one is diagnosed with cancer and dealing with that. And those books can be very, very heavy, even if a lot of times they are good. But in this book, the illnesses talked about are made up. They are illnesses that turn you into a certain animal gradually. So it kind of deals with like that slow terminal death type of story in a little bit of a humorous way. And it was just so well written, really, really well written. And it was also told atypically, which I really, really enjoy. So some chapters were kind of normal. Other pages were told in the form of like a scene. There's a bit of jumping back and forth, but it's not confusing at all. And then the second part of the book is actually one of the main characters mother's story. So there's a lot going on. But yeah, as I said, it's not confusing at all and so well written. So this is my personal pick for book of the year. But then I did have two other five stars in The Wishing Game and none of this is true. And I have gotten a little bit pickier with my five stars over the last couple of years. So to give a five star, that definitely means that I think there was basically nothing wrong with it. It stayed with me. I really, really enjoyed it. So I think it's pretty good that three out of five of these books for me were five stars. And Wayward certainly could be in the future. And yours truly, I think, was very solid. I just don't love that rom-com genre. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you. And do let me know which of these books you have read down below. And if you do happen to be new to Book of the Month, if you wanna check it out, I do have a referral code in my description. I am a pretty cheap person. I buy a lot from thrift stores and from Book Outlet, which is another online store that I have a code for if you wanna check that one out. But yeah, Book of the Month I think is pretty cool because you can get early Early releases sometimes and it does encourage me to try out books that I probably would not have. But if you like this video please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. It really does help my channel out a lot and stay tuned because more moving content is coming. But thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!